God, so we thank you. We thank you for your love. And then God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. But I thank you personally for this opportunity to be used by you, Father God. And I pray to God that you prepare the hearts of your people to receive the word that you have for them. And I just pray, Lord, that our lives are better. And Lord, that we be able to go out and be ambassadors for you. We thank you and we bless you, Lord. What's in the mind of bless the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you will, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter, chapter number one. And we're going to take a look at verse 11 through 17 on today. Luke 1, 11 through 17. Luke 1, 11 through 17. Amen. The word of God. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled. And fear fell upon him. And the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard. And your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And when he will, and he will turn away, turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah, to turn the hearts of the fathers to children, and the disobe disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want you to turn to your neighbor, and I want you to share with them these words. Neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. the preacher, the preacher. With, the with the help of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. We'll, preach we'll preach from the subject, from the subject. Predetermined, predetermined for a purpose. For a purpose. Amen. You may be seated. As we set up the scene of this morning, here we have Zacharias, who's a priest. And he's one of God's men who is a priest for the children of Israel. And he's a stand between to be able to help the people be guided into doing what God has said. And he and his wife, Elizabeth, at the moment had no children. She was barren. And the Bible declares that when we look at it, it's that he prayed. And when he prayed, it says that the Lord has answered his prayer. I want to share something with us. The Bible is not really clear on whether or not he prayed for the son. But we know that the son was a direct product of him praying. And what we've got to understand in the text is that when we look at what God does, God does what he does, how he wants to do it, when he wants to do it. And it's our job not to question so much what he does, but to accept his will and follow along with his program. When we look at it, here it is. Zacharias is praying and God has answered his prayer. And the angel is letting him know that his prayer is answered by him receiving a son named John after his wife, his wife was barren. And when we look at the text, we've got to understand this one thing, is that when we look at our prayers, when we look at going to God, and we look at what we pray for, how many of you know that many times that what we get, we don't realize sometimes what we get is answered prayer? Okay. See, this is the thing. Many times we'll pray for peace, uh, and the law will bring chaos. Okay, we are, we are preaching. Many times, you, you pray for one thing, and God will bring something else so that you get what you're asking for. 
See, many times we don't understand that when we pray for patience, God gonna put you in some stuff to help you grow some patience. Because the testing of your faith working, patience. John, uh, not John, Zacharias prayed and God gave him John. But I'm not clear on what he prayed for, but we know that the birth of John is a direct product of him praying. Where are you going with this, preacher? See, some of you all, some of you all may have prayed some prayers. And I'm going to share this with you, and I pray you receive it the way you need to receive it. Some of you have prayed some prayers, and the answer to your prayer is sitting right next to you. Oh, Jesus. But Pastor, you don't know the trouble they give me. Pastor, you don't know what they do. You know, the answer to your prayer may be sitting right next to you. And what you got to understand is, is that John is a direct result of Zacharias praying and God answering his prayer. But I'm not clear on what Zacharias prayed for. But we know that the angel said that his prayers, his prayers were answered. Well, Pastor, what do you want me to get from this particular portion of the text? Well, see, you being here may be a direct result of answered prayer. And see, what we've got to understand is this one thing, is that don't ever treat what God gives you like it's nothing. See, you got to understand this one thing, that our children are gifts. And our children are blessings from above. And God gives us children so that we can carry on what it is that he has done in our life and carry on his name. How many of you know that God has locked up greatness in some of our children, but some parents don't realize it and they never nurture what God has put in them? And what ends up happening is, is that not only your house is not blessed because of it, many other people that God wanted to bless through them is not blessed as well. And what we've got to understand is that we were predetermined for, for purpose. Why? Because God wants to use us. He wants to use our children to be a blessing to the world and to make a positive impact in the world. It is our job to make sure that we allow them to be all that God has called them to be. Why? Because God may have a ministry for them that's out of this world. But you know what amazes me, Sister Kaisha, is that God has a way that even if the parent doesn't do it, that he'll send people in that child's life so that child can get where that child needs to get why? Because that's God's way. Because thy will, will, will be done. So you sitting where you sit, doing what you do, you may be a direct result of answered prayer. Where are you going with that preacher? You see, somebody is still alive today because you live. <laughs> see, somebody stays better because you exist. See, somebody didn't do something that they were going to do because the Lord allowed your paths to cross. And you got to understand this one thing, that you are answer prayer. And when we look at John, John was the answer to Zacharias' prayer. And I'm led to believe that Zacharias' prayer had to do with Israel getting their minds right. Well, how do you figure that, preacher? Because of what God had called him to do. To what? To turn the people's heart to God. And that's what God used John to do. And when God does what he does, sometimes it's done in a way to where, okay, wait a minute. We're waiting for God to lighten something out of the sky or make this great mighty move. No, God just made nine months later allow you to give birth to the answer. Jesus. Don't y'all get scared, those that are a little bit older in age. Amen. But the Lord can do what the Lord can do. Amen. 
can do. But you being here is a direct result of answered prayer. I want you to take a look at verse 15. It says, for he will be great in the sight of, of the Lord. And shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And will also be filled with the Holy Spirit. Even from his mother's womb. John was literally saved before he even got here. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, one thing I want to point out is this. Is that he says he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And also be filled with the Holy Spirit. How many of you know that your ministry, your purpose, your call, what God has called you to do, may call for your life to look a little bit different from others? And see, you've got to understand this one thing. When you have a holy ministry, I promise you, the Lord wants you to have a holy lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the Bible doesn't condemn or send people to hell for, you know, getting their little swig on every now and again and, you know, having their little glass of wine occasionally, you know, and, and you know, indulging in, in, in some of these things. But can I help you? A holy ministry will cause your life to look a little bit different from everybody else's. Well, where are you going with this preacher? You see, you got to understand that when God calls you to something, then guess what? You've got to be able to understand the sacrifices that you have to make. Guess what? Will look different from what everybody else has to do. Don't count it as unfair. Count it as an honor because God chose you. You've got to understand that as Christians, as believers, whatever God has placed upon your life, can I help you? That he doesn't just want you to wear Christian around your neck and wear a Christian on your bumper sticker and wear a Christian on your doorpost. He wants you to wear a Christian in your home. And in what you do, what you say, how you live, how you carry yourself, it may look a little bit differently from other people. And see, you got to understand, John, John couldn't drink. He, he couldn't drink like everybody else even though we know that there were those who were Christians that drunk in the Bible. But he had a holy and he had a distinct call in his life to where he couldn't really get involved with some stuff. You know why? Because he had to be filled with the Holy Spirit and not filled with that drink. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you know people of God that guess what? That when God calls you to something, that really truthfully, the calling that he has on your life may bring about some frustration because you feel it's unfair. But how many of you know, if you know God called you to it, then guess what? That you'd be better for doing it if you didn't do it at all. And it, it brings about frustration because why? Because I could see John seeing everybody else doing some stuff. And not being able to indulge in it. But can I help you? His ministry was greater than his. It, greater than what he wanted. And greater than his flesh. And greater than his temptations. Children, I want to encourage you. See, there are times when you will be tempted and people are going to put stuff in front of you. And people are going to try to encourage you to do some things you know you shouldn't do. But just remember, your call is greater than that one moment of satisfaction. Because your calling, your calling calls for you to have a lifestyle that doesn't look like everybody else's. So what if they talk about you because you don't have certain things or can't go certain places or can't indulge in certain things? Your call your ministry and your purpose requires you to look and live differently than everybody else. Amen. But it's for you to tap into the Holy Spirit to guide you and help you to handle your hands. Because I promise you, what ends up happening is people who cannot do what you do 
will really truthfully pick on you because they don't have enough courage and strength to do what you do. So they'll try to pull you where they are so they'll feel happy and miserable with you. But you've got to remember that your call, your purpose, your ministry is bigger than your one moment of satisfaction. See, living with a purpose demands a different lifestyle than the normal. But that's living with a purpose. That's when you know you have, you have purpose. Everybody else can say this and do this and do that. Everybody can do this, that and the other and go this place and that place and the other get involved with this and get involved with that and get involved with the other. But can I help you? That guess what? When you understand your purpose, you understand that even though my flesh is telling me to go here, go there, and go the other place, no, my purpose and call is greater than what I really want to do. Your lifestyle, your lifestyle will be more purposeful when you understand your purpose. Well, what else, preacher? And he will turn many children of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, and to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. See, one thing I want you to get is this, is that John's purpose involved him preparing the way for Jesus. Okay? Where are you going with that preacher? I'll let you know in a minute. See, John's purpose and his call help prepare the way for Jesus. Okay? Help me out, preacher. You see, John could have got messed up in his head and thought he was something because the Lord enabled him to be able to touch people's lives. And John could have got a big head thinking he was somebody because the Lord allowed him to do the things he was able to do. But one thing John didn't do John did not allow himself to get to the point to where it was all about him. Because he even said he wasn't even worried, worthy enough to tie Jesus' shoes. You know what that didn't help me understand? He realized that his purpose and his ministry was bigger than him. See, we've got to understand that when we look at purpose and purpose from a Christian standpoint, We've got to understand that our purpose is really bigger than us. So when you when you when you look in the mirror, I want you to tell yourself, yep, it's bigger than why on you. Always tell yourself it's bigger than why on you. In your marriages, tell yourself it's bigger than why on you. At your jobs, tell yourself it's bigger than why on you. Okay? In your families, tell yourself it's bigger than why on you. In your ministry, tell yourself it's bigger than why on you. Why? Because you got to understand, God doesn't make it about you, but he does use you to help the greater good. And John understood that. And John understood that the calling on his life, the success that he had, the things he was able to do, the souls that he was allowed to minister to and turn their hearts to God had nothing to do with him. It had everything to do with his purpose. And his purpose was bigger than him. So when you live life with purpose, you realize that it's bigger than you. Way bigger than you. But God chooses to use you to uplift his holy name and to advance, advance his kingdom. Well, preacher, what do you want me to get from this? See, your reason for being here goes beyond your own glory and honor. Why? Because it's bigger than us. What is it all about? It is about bringing glory to the God that we serve. It's bringing glory to Jesus Christ who died, who was buried, and who rose again for our sins. It's about lifting up the holy name of God. It's about representing him. It's about being ambassadors for Christ. It's about letting God use us to be able to let some folk who are never into the four walls get a glimpse of who God is. 
Why? Because your purpose, your purpose is bigger than who you are. Your reason for being here goes beyond your own glory. And I, that's why the Bible stresses do what you do without complaining. You know why? Because complaining says, because it didn't go like it. Oh, that's what complaining does. Now, is that time to let people know your grievances? Yes. But, you know, I've, I've discovered you can develop a habit of complaining. And some folk complain when they ain't even nothing to complain about. And my mama used to tell me, boy, you cry with a little braid under your arm. Sometimes we complain when really truthfully we already have exactly what we need. We gotta understand that when we look at our lives and we look at our purpose, that it's really, it's really bigger than who we are. So let's go back and let's take a look at it. When we look at John and we look at Zacharias, we gotta understand Zacharias prayed for something, and when he prayed for something, God gave him John. Hmm. Well. What do you want to say? You being here may be a direct result of answered prayer. Right? What else, uh, Pastor? Well, when you look at John not being able to drink strong drink or wine, you got to understand this one thing. Living with a purpose demands a different lifestyle than what's normal. What else do you want to know, preacher? Well, I also want you to know this one thing is that John was here to prepare the way for Christ. That was his purpose, to prepare the way for Christ. And John never let his ministry and his purpose go to his end. Why? Because he understood it was bigger than him. The reason you for being here, your reason for being here, goes beyond your own glory and your own honor. Why? Because it's bigger than you. It's bigger than me. But collectively, God uses us to be a blessing to the body of Christ, to be a blessing to other people, and to be able to do things that will be a blessing to this world. And one thing I want you to get is this, is that you never ever realize, you never ever realize why God put you here until you seek him for why you're here. And some of us don't realize that there are some people that, and I'm going to say it, and I mean it, and I want you to hear me out. There's some people who didn't commit suicide because you were in their life. There's some people who are Christians because you witnessed them. There's some people who are alive today because you were born. You see, you gotta understand that when you live a life of purpose, God will allow you to see that. And understand a life of purpose has nothing to do with you, but it has everything to do with you being a blessing to other people. So all I'm praying for you to do, and I want to challenge you to live a life of purpose. Mm -hmm. Live a life unselfish. Live a life of pleasing God with your life and with your lips and making a difference in people's lives. Because can I help you? That's why you are here. That's why you were born. Why? To be a blessing to the people that God puts in your path. And you never know, sometimes, just you saying hello to somebody. Mm. Stop them from bringing a gun to work. Mm. Mm. All right. That's true. Got to understand that. Because why? God has put us here for purpose. When we live life for the purpose, then we can see God blessing the lives of others. Amen? Amen. Amen. You got some praise. Amen. You know, he is, he is good. Pastor, you done? Yep. Say two. <laughs>
see me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>